Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Now, for the people who follow my channel daily, I know, I'm so sorry. It is supposed to be spook miss. But like, spook? Must? No? Ooh, you suck! I know, it's supposed to be spook miss, but the design that I had originally for spook miss ended up. I knew it was gonna take a way longer than the time I had allotted for it. So I'm pushing him back and he's going to be in January. I am so sorry. You guys get cute oh. instead. <laughs> this is what you want me to do. So we are going to be making a baby Rudolph instead. And I was I was laying down one night and at in three o'clock in the morning as one does when I'm just like, I wanna make a baby deer. Oh my god, I should make a baby deer. Why have I not making a baby deer? <gasps> it's Christmas time. <gasps> I'm gonna make Rudolph. <laughs> so that's the thought process I had at like three o'clock in the morning. I wanted to make a baby Rudolph and I wanted to have a cute little light up. And I was like, come on, that sounds adorable. So that is what we're going to be making. So let's get started. So I'm going to be resin casting Rudolph's head, but I want to make sure that I leave a channel going through his head to his nose so that I can make it light up later on. I thought about drilling it, but from past experience, I know drilling through resin is an absolute nightmare. So I had this silicone tubing that was rated for high temperature. So I was like, Let's just stick it in there and see what happens. And it actually ended up working really well. So if you ever need to do any type of channels and resin use a tubing <laughs> for anyone curious I am using smooth cast 300 it is my number one go-to resin for when I'm ever making cast because it cures white and it only cures in about 10 minutes and for anyone who would like to see the sculpting for this specific deer it is in my starry night fawn video I decided to mold it because I liked the head so much and I haven't really used it so I decided to use it again for little Rudolph here I just I love this head sculpt I, I really should use it more but I always forget how much resin it uses like do you think that's enough resin I got right there just take a vote right now do you think that's enough resin it's not it's not it's not enough resin so I had to pour more resin like very quickly <laughs> Like every time I do resin casting, it's always the best. I don't try to paint a, pi a perfect picture that I knew exactly, I measured correctly, and I know everything and every little bit of piece. Like, no, I, I chucked some resin in there and was like, oh crap, that's not enough. We gotta make more really quickly. <laughs> like it's just, it's art. It's art, baby. Like sometimes it's it's wacky and fun and it, and it just gets crazy. And here is the resin casting and as you can see that little yellow bit is actually the tubing. I taped off one end so that it wouldn't, the resin wouldn't just flow inside the tubing because then that would be kind of productive. But it worked perfectly and it left me a very perfect channel to put an LED in. Now I do need to dremel off the nose because I need to be able to put an LED in his nose and I also need to make sure that his nose is going to be transparent and solid white resin isn't really transparent. But dremeling is a very scary thing and I always feel like I'm being very dangerous and not safe so I have a little PSA for you when it comes to dremeling. Don't you dare try it You might die if you do this at home do, 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 do. Just, just be careful when you're using a Dremel And don't use a knife like I did I couldn't find a jeweler saw Just be better than me <laughs> But now that I have the nose cut off It's time to re-sculpt the nose I'm going to be using translucent Sculpey and this clay is very important because once it hardens, it will still give it a very translucent look, which will make it very easy for a LED to shine through it and give that glowing Rudolph red nose effect that I'm going for. Now, I just need to make sure that I am not sticking the clay very tightly to the resin casting because I need to make sure I'm able to remove it to bake it in the oven separately. And now I, I realized very quickly, I, I'm so used to sculpting dog noses that this was looking very dog-like and not very deer-like in the nose. So I had to go and look up some, say it with me, people say it with me, references, people, references. I had to go look up some references of some deer noses because I don't sculpt them enough to know what they look like. And I will always shout from the rooftops that 
references are so important and they just level up your artwork to a level you didn't think possible and i'm not just talking anatomically correct or muscle anatomy stuff that is important i did use that for my case but i'm also just talking about inspiration things that you like save that as a reference for you to use later save that as a guide for you like color palettes you like just things like that it'll just help you level art level art level up your art in a way you didn't know before thank you for coming to my ted talk so i was gloating a little bit and i was like you know i'm starting to get a little bit better about leaving everything in frame you know it, it's happening a little bit less and then i see like i said this literally as i was watching the video i was like you know what these frames aren't that bad and now look at me can you see me texturing the nose because i can't just what am i doing there yeah i'm a great i'm a great teaching person just what <laughs> oh, oh get a little bit in there i got I, I got a little bit in there you missed all the good part because i used a clay stamp but you know you know it's fine it's fine and now it is time to work on the glowing aspect of rudolph's nose now absolute disclaimer here i am a total noob and amateur when it comes to led so please don't use any of my videos as a guide on how to learn i will link some good videos in the description of people who actually know what they're doing because I, I don't <laughs> like i still don't even know how to really uh solder like i just like here i know i'm just like why won't you just solder correctly what is going on i still don't know what i'm doing i am very very amateur somehow though it still works out in the end so if this little amateur can do it you can do it too if you're looking into it just watch the videos i link in the description and here I am putting in the nose and the LED just to give it a little test just to make sure that everything is going to fit correctly. Now for the battering casing, you're supposed to put heat sink, but I took this little tip from Enchantarium to just cover in hot glue because I couldn't put any uh, shrink tubing there. It wouldn't really fit, but it still works. Like, look, it's lighting up. And then when I put on the little clay thing, like it glows. I, I, I was very happy that it works. I never know if any of these things are going to work. Half the things I do are just like, in theory, this should work. And I hope it does. And let's see if it does. And then when it does, you're just like, oh, yay, it worked. And now I need to glue on the nose. And so I'm just taking a little dab of super glue to just hold it in place long enough. Because I am going to go back in with epoxy sculpt just to make sure it's really reinforced. I don't know if it was totally necessary to go in with the epoxy sculpt, but I wanted to make sure that it was firmly in there and that the surface was smooth because I'm going to be furring the face later. Now since the Fawn's head is so large and heavy and I'm using a lot thicker wire than I normally do, I'm not really comfortable using clay for the feet just because I'm always concerned that it might break under the strain of the wire. It never really does, but I, I always talk myself out of it. So I'm using Instamorph here instead for the feet. Now what Instamorph is, is just these little plastic pellets that you put in really, really hot water and then they melt and become moldable. And you can do really basic shapes with them and then once they cool off, they become a very hard plastic once again please be careful with instamorph i mean you really need to use some really hot water with it so i don't want you guys actually burning yourselves but um it's really great for just little things like i'm not doing too detailed of hooves i'm just wanting to get the really general shape with it because first going to be covering most of it anyway so i just want to get the general look it's really great for little things like horns and hooves and stuff like that and then it is time for quilt batting. Once the armature is made and the nose is baked and, and the hooves are made, it is time to cover the body in quilt batting to build up its thickness. Now quilt batting, you can get from pretty much anywhere. Any craft store will sell it. Walmart even sells it. Amazon It's pretty readily available. And it's just this very long sheet because it's made for quilts and I cut it into strips and I wrap it around the body over and over and over again until the body is built up to how thick I want it. Now something to always keep in mind and something I was always mention is you want to make sure if you're actually going to make an art doll don't build up the body quite as much as you want the end result to be because whatever fabric or faux fur you're going to add on top of that is going to add additional thickness so the body will end up being a size that you don't want so always just make sure to keep that in mind but like i always say if you want chunk 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 boy you go and you get chunk 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 boy if you want thin 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 boy you go on and you get thin 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 boy okay we support all body shapes and sizes here
popping in for your not so daily reminder that if you've been thinking about a project or just something that you've been really wanting to do but you've just been saying to yourself i'm not good enough i don't even know where to begin i just i can't do it How would it, how would it i don't know hey hey you look at me you look at me in these eyes holes okay you can do the thing okay i believe in you you guys tell me how much you believe in me, so I believe in you. You can absolutely go do the thing. Let me tell you, the first step is the hardest. So while this video is playing, go start it. Whether that's writing it down, getting a materials list, or just, if you got all the materials list, just start. Just start while this video is playing. And I promise you'll feel better about it that you actually started. Also, go drink water. Okay. <laughs> also, I'd like to share these two wonderful art pieces. Look at them! Aren't they so lovely? Aren't they so beautiful? They're just so talented. Just mwah, mwah. If you have been thinking about something that you would like to share with me, or an art doll, a piece of art, just anything in general that you would like to share, please use the hashtag KP tutorial so that I can find it and I can possibly share it in my next video. Okay, let's get back to the video. Hit me, Pamela. Okay, my sewing for videos has been a hot mess lately. <laughs> because I've been trying to do fancier things with my sewing. But all that means is that I really can't explain what I'm doing. Because I, I don't know how to explain it. I don't even really know what I'm doing. I just know I wanted a brown faux fur to be the top part of the fawn. And then I wanted the bottom to be white because I was going to be airbrushing gradients on it. But I, like, I don't even know what I'm doing here, guys. <laughs> I don't even know how to explain it. I'm cutting slits in fabric for the legs for it to slide through. Struggle noises. Guys, please just watch an, a, a previous video where I know what I'm talking about and I'm, I'm doing a, a much better guide on how to sew because I talk about, you know, it's like a jacket and you're putting on a jacket and, and, you know, you do this and this and that. I don't know what I was doing that time. And while I was even filming it, I was like, dang, I don't even know what I'm doing. How am I going to tell them what I'm doing? I don't know. But. I do know what stitch I'm finally using. Like, you know how I always say, I don't know what stitch I'm using and you guys try to tell me and it's like a bunch of different stitches and I never know which one it actually is. But now I know it's a baseball stitch. I am using a baseball stitch as my main stitch to sew the white and brown fabric together. <laughs> and for the, I need to be able to access the battery for the fawn. So I'm actually taking some Velcro that I've bought with like a really strong adhesive and I'm going to be attaching that where I want to be able to access the battery. I just want to make sure I trim the fur away so I'm pretty much just on the backing so it has a better adhesion. Now I was skeptical about this Velcro's adhesion ability i thought it would just come right off but my god i can't pull it off so i have to make sure that i'm very precise on where i want it because once you put it down it ain't going nowhere so make sure you place it where you want it <laughs> i can however explain how i do the legs because those are just always the same i cut a piece of fabric the entire length of the limb and then i trim it down so it's nice and snug around the limb but not too tight because i don't want to restrict posability and then i just sew straight up from starting from the feet working my way up towards the body and to join the body fabric and the leg fabric together I will use a ladder stitch which is different than the baseball stitch once the madness of sewing is over it is now time to trim up the body and for that I start off with a pet shaver I absolutely recommend this tool for anybody who ever thinks they are going to make at least more than one art doll it just speeds up the process of trimming it is a lot smoother than just using scissors by themselves it comes with a bunch of different guards so that you can get different fur lengths depending on where you want it throughout the body it is just a very versatile and very helpful tool now that being said i'm not using it quite as much all over the body as i normally do i do want to retain some of the floof for little rudolph here i'm just mainly focusing on the neck and legs and i also always mention no matter 
uh, how much I used the pet shaver, I still have to go back in with scissors just to detail everything and make sure that everything is looking all nice and proper and anywhere that the pet shaver could not get, especially around the legs, just making sure like elbows look prominent and, and knees and ankles and things like that and just trimming it to make it look a little bit more presentable as you can see right here. Now, as much as I'd like to keep the pipe all dear look and I'm definitely gonna have to make one of those later on because it was absolutely adorable, it is time to airbrush the body to give a little bit more of a typical fawn appearance. I am using a dual action gravity feed airbrush, which is just really fancy talk for a pressure controlled airbrush where you put paint in from the top. I always mention that as long as you're being light handed with your airbrushing and you're not going too ham with the colors and you're not um, spraying too close to the art doll, generally speaking, the fur texture will remain almost unchanged. However, the darker the color, the harder it is to keep that same rule applied. So I have learned to take a little bit of alcohol, either 70% and above, and you just like, you take it on a paper towel and you rub it all over the art doll and it does lighten the color a little bit, but it makes the color bleed into the backing of the fabric so it looks that color all throughout instead of just being on the very top layer. And it also retains the softness of the fur. It, it blew my mind when I learned this. I It just, it, it just, I love it so much. I get so uh, about it <laughs> because it just, it really changes it. Like if you have crappy paints and that you're airbrushing with, cause you know, you can't afford like really fancy ones sometimes, but you use that alcohol technique, it still gives a really, really good result. And so I always say now when airbrushing, especially for darker colors, between your layers, go in and do the alcohol trick just to lighten it and, and make it soft again. That way it'll, be less crunchy for as long as possible. Which is, was definitely a requirement for this one because I did a lot of layers. <laughs> a lot of you ask me why I paint things after I have already covered it in fur and the honest to God answer is, is that I don't plan out very well and I usually forget to paint it beforehand. So now you get to see me struggle to try to move the fur away from his little antlers as close as possible so I can paint it. I'm just, I had to do the same things with the hooves. I don't plan out very well, guys. I really don't. <laughs> I try to feign like I do, but usually I'm just so focused on sewing and airbrushing and getting all that to match that I just forget. And then I come back and I'm like, oh wait, I have to paint it. Oh, damn it. Why didn't I paint it before? Why do I never paint before? This, this is me talking to myself. I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Once all the painting is done, I go in with a varnish for all the little painted bits. The eyes and nose get a high gloss varnish for that reflective and wet look. The hooves get DuraClear Soft uh, Matte Varnish, which it, it really feels soft. It is very good varnish and it's very scratch resistant, so I highly recommend it. And after that, this little one is all done. I would like to say the harness you see and the Santa hat you see was made by my lovely editor Sewa off camera, so unfortunately I don't have any footage of that. But after that, it was all done.